Hello and welcome to a special edition of The Big Picture. The polling for the presidential elections has ended. The two candidates, both political heavyweights, have made the elections most interesting, despite the fact that the results is a foregone conclusion. The campaign itself was unprecedented as for the first time we have witnessed the opposition candidate directly taking on the ruling alliance's candidate, raising allegations and indulging in confrontation. The elections and the run-up to it from deciding on the candidates had disturbed the alliances. Though the ruling UPA managed to keep its flock together in the last minute. However, NDA saw breaks in its ranks. The left front also was not united. In fact, within the CPIM, cracks have developed. Will it have a long-term impact on the alliances? Meanwhile, with Pranam Mukherjee's election being a certainty, what kind of a presidency can we expect from him? What will be the dynamics between the government and the Rashtrapati Bhavan? We will look at all this during the next one hour. To discuss this, I have with me a very interesting and experienced panel of guests, Harish Rawat, Minister of State for Parliamentary Affairs and Agriculture, will be soon joined by Nilotpal Basu, Central Committee member of the CPIM and a former MP. In the studio with me is Bharat Bhushan, a senior journalist and Nilab Mishra, editor Outlook Hindi. Welcome to all of you. First, let me go to Mr. Harish Rawat. Mr. Rawat, this has been a very interesting uh, uh, presidential yeah. elections. It took quite some time for the Congress party also to decide on its candidate. And finally, circumstances led you people to announce the candidate much earlier than, 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 uh, than probably you would have done. So all these things at the end of the day, are you people happy with the way the things have worked out? Yeah, we are certainly happy because the country is going to have a very uh, yes, president of a great stature, uh, of a great experience. Uh, Pranam Mukherjee sahab is a very veteran of Indian politics and uh, it will be very nice to see him as a president now. Okay, but as far as the campaign and was as concerned... As you have mentioned that, uh, that uh, as far as UPA is concerned, there was no hesitation anywhere. Right from the beginning, we are saying that UPA will remain together and everybody, all the constituents will support Sri Parna Mukherjee sahab. And we are really grateful to the other uh, side also. So, uh, parties like JDU, Sip Shena, CPM, Forward Block and many other, they came forward to support Sri Parna Mukherjee. It, uh, it is their tribute or it is their uh, 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 their consideration of his stature, they decided to uh, support Sri Parna Mukherjee. Mr. Rawat, you, today you are you are saying and this. UPA, but, we are really uh, thankful. But Mr. Rawat, today you are saying saying this. But till three days back, you were not sure of the support of one of your key allies. In fact, the one of your largest allies, uh, Mamta Banerjee, Trinamool Congress was not was not on the was not on board till till two days back. The, Pranavji has a long association with Mamta Banerjee and Mamta Banerjee has a great respect for him. We were quite confident that ultimately she will decide for, uh, in his favor. Uh, it is, uh, she is heading a political party. That political party may have their own consideration and uh, they, she has definitely taken some time but ultimately she decided to support. And we are really grateful to her. Okay. Uh, anyway, we will keep that aside now. Well, let me go to uh, Nilotpal Basu. Nilotpal Basu, one of the uh, parties which has suffered in this elections due to the presidential, due to the stand which you took is your own party. The CPIM, there has been break in your ranks. Your, you have had to, you know, do an extraordinary thing that the JNU SFI unit has to be disbanded because of this elections and the stand you have taken. Don't you think that this election has proved to be what you thought would be a great political advantage has turned out to be a biggest political disadvantage to you? <laughs> I think, Girish, I expected uh, little more from a seasoned uh, journalist like you. 
बिकॉज वाट हैज़ हैपन्ड रिगार्डिंग द एक्सपालशन ऑफ वन ऑफ आर फॉर्मर मेम्बर्स एंड वाट हैज़ हैपन्ड इन जे एन यू इज रियली अ वेरी वेरी स्मॉल एलिमेंट एंड इफ यू हैव एक्चुअली वॉच द डिवेलपमेंट्स अबाउट एस एफ आई इन जे एन यू इट हैड टू डू विद ओवरऑल अप्रोच दैट द एस एफ आई यूनिट इन जे एन यू टू विच गोज फार बियॉन्ड दूज थ्रोन अप बाई द प्रेजिडेंशियल इलेक्शन but i think we did the right thing because we have been uh, consistent since the beginning of the 1990s uh, as in how the bjp uh, grew in strength uh, that uh, since the president involves uh, the upkeep of the constitutional scheme uh, it is very important uh, to to retain the secular democratic nature of our republic and therefore uh, given the position that rss has uh, it is very important to uh, keep the post uh, beyond the uh, influence of the rss and uh, uh, in a way uh, mr sangma has disappointed in course of the campaign when he said on the question of uh, who murdered uh, graham steins or uh, the, the communal uh, riots uh, in dangs uh, is something he is uh, ready to pardon so already he, he is very much under the spell of uh, those very Mr. forces that Nilo i refer to mr mr nilotpal basu the question is not about sangma the question is about your party one two things have happened in these elections one you have not been able to retain the left unity second you are you are you are trying to undermine what has happened within your own party but the fact the fact remains that you the party line which you took you are not able to convince your own cadre about the party line which you took and that is a reality and you may you may be trying to undermine it you may be trying to say, say that you know it's a very minor thing but it is an it is indicative of the fact that you people the cpim has not been able to convince its own cadre uh, girish i must tell you that uh, uh, incidentally we have uh, about uh, 1 million members in the country and uh, therefore uh, the disproportionate uh, uh, overblowing of this issue in itself uh, goes to underline the uh, bias absolute bias against the left of the corporate owned media and we are not surprised this has been going on for quite some time and so far as the left parties are concerned uh, we are uh, uh, very clear and the left parties each one of the left parties are very clear that these has this tactical differences on this question has nothing to do with the political unity that the left parties have got okay. time and again each of the left parties have reiterated this point but the fact that you conveniently choose to overlook those positions no we are not uh, is again I'm, is again a sad commentary on no, the no, it is state not, of nobody, objective journalism nobody is overlooking those positions but the fact is that new situations have emerged one of the things which which was said by your party general secretary when you when he decided to when he announced that they would be supporting the that you would all be that you would be supporting pranav mukherjee's candidacy was was the fact that mamta banerjee has decided to stay away and or not support pranav mukherjee you made it look as if that's a political uh, you have, you have managed to politically upstage her by taking this stand but at the end of the day she managed to up stage you back shall shall i respond shall please, i respond please yeah, please very quickly please uh, i mean uh, i don't want to sour the uh, good mood of uh, my friend harish rawat ji uh, but the fact that uh, he was waxing eloquent on the very good relations between mamta banerji and pranam mukherji but she herself in the public statement where she uh, extended support to pranab mukherjee's candidature made a very clear point that for the last 8 months they are not on talking terms and uh, why did it take uh, uh, so long to really realize what is in the country's national interest is something that the people of uh, this country will themselves uh, uh, come to a, a conclusion but what i am saying that uh, 
this was one of the points and the objective basis of our assessment that there is a difference between the Congress and the TMC is not merely on the question of differences on the choice of the presidential nominee, but it is more fundamental because of the authoritarian streak of the TMC. It is not only the left which is at the receiving ends, but even the Congress party is under attack and whatever semblance of political support that Congress has, uh, the TMC with the administration is blatantly trying to uh, okay. usurp that. And okay. as a result of that, the tussle will, continues and, and will, uh, that assessment is equally uh, valid notwithstanding okay. whatever uh, she okay. is saying about, okay. about, about the presidential election. Okay, Nilotpal, we'll, we'll, we'll get back to other issues. You please stay on. We have uh, Tariq Anwar, the NCP General Secretary and MP, uh, also joining us. Uh, Mr. Tariq Anwar, at the end of the day, do you think that the UPA has been strengthened through these elections? Uh, it is very obvious. I think uh, uh, you have seen that uh, this election is not a actually a proper election, I can say. Because it is a one-sided election, I think uh, the Pranabda is going to win by a thumping majority. And uh, the opposition party, particularly BJP, they have adapted a outsider as a, their candidate. So it is a very clear they are just a, uh, contesting this election uh, for the sake of opposition, nothing else. So I am very sure that uh, the UPA is emerging again and uh, there was uh, some uh, confusion uh, going on that uh, UPA is uh, uh, weak, weak, uh, weak, uh, weak weekend. weekend and uh, UPA will uh, uh, weekend and uh, UPA uh, will divide on this issue but uh, ultimately of course uh, there was some confusion in the beginning but uh, uh, today it was very clear that uh, uh, everybody on uh, was on board right uh, we will come to the we'll come back and we'll discuss the issue of your own party man, Mr. Sangma, contesting in a, as an opposition candidate. There has been a lot of discussion on that. But uh, let me come to my uh, studio guest, uh, Nila. You know, this whole uh, presidential campaign, the way it was conducted, the way the candidates, the confusion during the ch choosing of the candidates, and the way finally it, it emerged and the kind of campaign which went on. Do you, do you see this as some kind of a watershed in Indian politics that uh, we have seen or do you do you see this as a trend in future also more than a watershed i mean it's a trend you know and this trend what we have witnessed just now is i mean this the trend has not concretized what we have witnessed just now is various parties have been jostling within their own alliances, alliances. trying to send messages trying to their own allies and trying to negotiate from a position of a strength. For right. instance, take JDU. You. you know, it is not that it has joined the UPA. Right. In the vice presidential election, it is still voting with the NDA. But it has sent a warning to the NDA. Right. You know, it has sent a warning more particularly to the BJP. BJP. And there, you know, he, Nitish Kumar probably has his own political future I mean, considerations of his own political future and he is you know at about the same time that he uh, made the announcement to support Pranam Mukherjee he also brought in Narendra Modi's question you know? right right and so it was a message I mean it was quite obvious what he was trying to do similarly the Congress you know by upstaging Mamta through Mulayam Singh Yadav has sent a message that it could bypass Mamta Banerjee. You know, so there has been jostling within alliances. Left is not an exception to Absolutely. this trend. Right. There the CPI has tried to assert itself. Right. You know, so it's more of a, you know, and in future, if these various parties fail in their design of renegotiating their position within their own alliances, you know, there might be some other alliances. Bharat, do you agree with what Nilab says? Everybody trying to uh, keep options open for, for the future. At least some of these 
key political parties. We will keep Shiv Sena out of it. Shiv Sena, why they supported Pranab is, you know, obviously last time they supported uh, Pratibha Patil on the question of Marathi pride. But this time, we see a different kind of uh, dynamics working in the present, presidential election. By and large, I agree with what Nila has said. Hmm. Uh, yes, people are sending signals to their alliance partners. And it's uh, fairly evident to almost anybody who studies the Indian political scene that 2014 is going to be a much more fractious uh, uh, election. The verdict would be uh, divided. So new alliances will come up. But in every political decision, you have an immediate outcome and a long-term outcome. Right. In the immediate uh, outcome, it's UPA which seems to have gained because Absolutely. they've broken the ranks of uh, NDA. NDA. Nobody from UPA has gone towards the NDA side. Right. People thought that even Mamta would go, but she didn't eventually. Yes. Her compulsions are such that she came to UPA. So there's been consolidation of UPA and uh, there's been uh, 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 sort of cracks in the, in the, in the, in the NDA end. ranks. Right. And there I agree with Nilab that uh, Nitish and uh, Nitish's uh, political future has played a role in determining what he has done in the presidential poll. And uh, as far as the uh, ADMK and uh, Biju Janta Dal, which initially seemed to be very major players in this, they somehow ret retreated into the background and they, were, they didn't become major players. They didn't take as much interest as they took initially. Well, they also have 2014 in mind. Right. You would remember that they're talking of a federal front, etc. Right. So we don't know how many different kind of fronts are in the offing and how many of them will really uh, come into being. But they are the ones who brought Sangma forward. They are the ones who helped polarize Indian politics in, such, in, in, a, in a particular way. You would yes. remember initially, although uh, the BJP was not enthusiastic about uh, Mr. Mukherjee or Mr. Ansari, but uh, uh, you know, th there was a certain hope that, because Pranam Mukherjee enjoys a great amount of respect amongst Absolutely. some of the BJP also, that they would probably go along with him. So I was personally quite surprised how the BJP got so active in, in Sangma's election. Uh, and the kind of stand they took and some of the people, you know, sort of challenging uh, their uh, nomination on technical grounds, etc. I think BJP is miscalculated there a bit. However, um, it is the AIADMK in fact, and the BJP. In fact, they, they saw themselves, they, I mean, they ended up imposing, getting a candidate imposed on themselves. Exactly. Because, of, their, because of the confusion. It doesn't make sense. I'll tell you what, because the impact it will have on Pranam Mukherjee in the long run would be that you might have, uh, uh, you know, these kind of uh, memories uh, 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 determining future decisions. <laughs> Absolutely. We, we will continue this discussion. In fact, whether, uh, as what Bharat Bhushan says, that it has strengthened, a lot of people feel that the UPI has been strengthened in this round, but whether this strength, whether this kind of alliances will continue up to 2014, we will discuss all these things. We need to go to a short break now. Please keep watching. We'll be back very soon. Welcome back. We are discussing the presidential elections in this special edition of the big picture. Let me go to uh, Harish Rawat. Mr. Rawat, do you see, we were discussing about how UPA has got strengthened, even uh, Tariq Anwar was mentioning that, and you were also mentioning that, but do you see this kind of strength which you have gained in this election being carried forward till 2014? One should remember that the support which Mamta Banerjee announced to Pranam Mukherjee was with a rider and a completely a very unusual rider. She said she's very painful taking this decision. She has all the, all the complaints or all the grouses which she has against the government continues. So this is something which cannot be seen as, as an all-time solution. This, must, this may have been a temporary solution as far as Mamta Banerjee is concerned. Uh, two, uh, two things are very clear in my mind. Yes. One, that this is going to be a very, very gainful election for our republic. Uh, our democracy will further strengthen by uh, electing Sri Pranam Mukherjee uh, with such kind of bro broad consensus, which has ultimately emerged among the political parties right. across, uh, across uh, the spectrum, political right. spectrum. Uh, secondly, uh, for UPA also, uh, it, is a, it is quite a big gain. And 
In fact, uh, now uh, it is the moment for us to consolidate our position okay. further. We have one and half, more than one and a half year right. uh, to look forward. And uh, I think certainly we will, uh, we, will, uh, we will take this opportunity to further strengthen our, um, our alliance as well as uh, we will uh, focus on our po policy decisions and their implementation. Very importantly, Mr. Rawat, Mamta Banerjee has said that the kind of coordination within the UPA, which she says has been lacking all these days, needs to be strengthened. You think, you think the Congress party, which is the major party of the coalition, will take her words seriously and you know ensure that there is better coordination within the UPA? Always, we respect our allies, and uh, certainly Mamta Banerjee is a very valuable uh, colleague. Very valuable colleague. So, certainly, whatever she has said, uh, that that will uh, that is before us, and we will certainly act on that. Okay, okay. Thank you, Mr. Rawat. Thanks for giving us the time. I'm told that you need to go. Thank you very much. Let me come to Nilotpal. Nilotpal, the outcome of this elections, what kind of a long-term political implications you see uh, on the on the on the Indian political scenario? Uh, first of all, I think I will uh, clearly disagree with uh, uh, some of my co-panelists when they say that UPA has got consolidated. I think uh, presidential election is hardly the forum uh, where actually political process gets uh, consolidated or weakened hmm. uh, because uh, uh, the political parties are not really approaching the people and uh, mobilizing them. Therefore, uh, I think... Uh, uh, it will be a, a misplaced presumption to say that uh, a certain alliance or a certain party has got uh, uh, strengthened uh, due to whatever happened in the presidential election. Uh, the second question is... Uh, Nilotpal, on one Nilotpal, one second. Do, would you also apply the same uh, formula as far as weakening of the alliance is concerned? So NDA, so, NDA also need not be too much worried about the break in its ranks? Uh, I think uh, uh, there are uh, different questions. I mean, uh, just if you allow me a couple of minutes, I will uh, clarify the position. And uh, I think it is uh, completely illusory on the part of the Congress or the observers to see uh, that uh, the hatchet has been uh, really right. buried between the TMC and the Congress because they continue and because of uh, the tactical position that we had taken on the uh, question of the presidential uh, uh, contest, uh, actually the differences between the Congress and Trinomul uh, uh, got uh, further uh, highlighted and uh, further underlined. Uh, so far as the India is concerned, its uh, problem is far more serious because you see, for example, the most important ally, JDU, the position that they have taken is not just uh, limited to the uh, question of presidential uh, nomination. Uh, it it uh, spills over to the question of who should spearhead the, uh, 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 the 2004 uh, 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 parliamentary election campaign. And they have clearly refused to accept uh, the choice of the RSS, uh, Narendra Modi, as the spearhead of the NDA campaign. I think that is much more bothersome so far as the BJP uh, is concerned in terms of uh, carrying forward the NDA. And uh, so far as the left parties are concerned, the point that was being made by Bharat Bhushan ji earlier, I really don't agree because, you see, the categories are different. The differences are essentially of a tactical nature, not of a policy nature. And uh, uh, the, the uh, position of the Congress, paradoxically, is actually getting weakened vis-a-vis -vis the people. If you look at the result of by-elections and all that, okay. in the run-up to this presidential okay. election, I, okay, Nilotpal, absolutely I think, Nilotpal, I think Bharat Bhushan wants to respond to your uh, uh, statement. Bharat? No, I only have a question for Mr. Basu. Uh, suppose, uh, counterfactually, if uh, UPA had not been able to ensure victory for uh, Pranam Mukherjee, some of its allies had voted along with NDA for Mr. Sangma, and Mr. Sangma had won. At that point also, would Mr. Basu have said that UPA has not been weakened? Because, you know, they have not, after all, not gone to the people. It's an indirect election. Nilotpal? 
No, no, I am making a distinction between a presidential election and the general political process. You see, here in the presidential election, uh, there is, uh, as I agree, a uh, lot of jockeying, a lot of positioning and uh, uh, purported uh, reasons, uh, 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 I mean, uh, given as a okay. point of justification. But, but this does not mean, because many parties are flocking towards Congress, not because Congress is essentially strong, but the fact that Congress has got weakened, therefore, veering towards Congress may, may create possibilities whereby many of these uh, uh, political parties can actually assert their influence and some of these are in power in the state government. Okay. Therefore, Nilod they can that, that, that's extract a very, some price for that. Nilod Pan, that's a very interesting uh, you know, uh, uh, argument you're giving. I don't know how many people will agree with it. Anyway, we will keep this aside. I want to go to Tariq Anwar. Mr. Tariq Anwar... Mr. P. A. Sangma was your party member till yes. the other day. Now he has become the he has left the party, become the presidential candidate, and more or less we are all certain that he is not going to win these elections. Now, what kind of a political future do you see for him? Is there any possibility that the NCP will take him back? Oh, I don't think because uh, uh, 2004 he left the party and he joined NDA at that time with Mamta Banerjee and again he came back and we uh, have uh, at that time we accepted him uh, but this time I think uh, uh, the party leadership will not accept him and uh, he has to find out his future uh, within the NDA or whatever you can say. Okay. Um I think that's a very candid answer you have given. Now let me come to Nilab. Nilab, let's, let's go to the other issue. Post the results, the results are expected on 22nd and after that it's more or less certain that uh, Pranam Mukherjee will become the president. What kind of a presidency do we expect from a man like Pranam Mukherjee? Two things here. One, probably he is the most, he is the most powerful person who, has, who is occupying the post of the president in, in probably the last, uh, in, in, the, in the history of our in, uh, republic. To, except Rajendra Prasad, maybe there was nobody else who was as powerful as he was politically. Now, what kind of a presidency do you expect from him, as, considering the background which he, which he has? Um, listen, I once travelled with Mr. Mukherjee on an election campaign. Right. It was 1995 Bihar elections. And he was taking, um, he has a lot of anecdotes to tell right. you. And we got talking about Indira Gandhi's regime. And he took pride in the fact that he was Indira Gandhi's executioner. For right. instance, he told me how he had confronted A.R. Antule, asked him to resign, hmm. and things like these. Hmm. For the first time, we will find him in a role in which he is not an executioner for another person right you know so we still have to watch that but in the run up to the elections what we have seen is that he has you know it was he wanted to become the president of india and he was making it clear so and he in a way foreclosed all other options for the congress party i won't say he forced the hand of the congress right, high command right. But yes, he foreclosed all other options through that master move of Mulayam Singh and Mamta Banerjee right. proposing the names of so even the was, Prime Minister. I mean, it was not his move. It was the, uh, he, should, he should actually thank Mamta Banerjee and uh, Mulayam for that. Bharat, you know, uh, as far as, uh, yeah, please. You know, you know the comparison with Rajin Babu is not uh, 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 something that I, uh, I agree with. I think the comparison really is with Neelam Sanjeeva Reddy. Right. That you're getting, after Neelam Sanjeeva Reddy, the most uh, experienced uh, politician to occupy Rashtrapati Bhavan. All the other politicians, compared to the prime ministers uh, uh, with whom their tenure coincided, were weak people. Absolutely. Uh, except uh, Neelam Sanjeeva Reddy's time. Right. And now, Pranam Mukherjee will be powerful in that sense. Right. More experienced in politics and more experienced in understanding the dynamics of politics. Right. Uh, so you will get a strong president and an objective president but not necessarily a submissive president. And political parties like submissive presidents. Not, they don't, not, and not they don't like fair presidents. Certainly not a rubber stamp. Certainly not a rubber stamp. Uh, Tariq Anwar, what kind of a presidency do you expect? 
from uh, yes. uh, from Mr. Pranab Mukherjee. You no, know, he he is one of the most powerful members of the cabinet. He is one of the most powerful politicians. Yeah. He held all the important portfolios, and for him to now sit in Rashtrapati Bhavan and just watch in silence what happens, is it not going to be difficult for him? Cut again. Tariq Anwar, I think we have we have lost we have lost his link. We'll come back to him. Uh, Nilotpal, if you have heard that question, what I asked Tariq Anwar, I would like a reply from you on that also. Okay, I think there is some problem with audio. We'll go into a short break now. Please keep watching. We'll be back very soon. Welcome back. We are discussing the presidential elections and looking at the various issues and events which have happened around it. Uh, let me go to, uh, I think we have got uh, uh, Mr. Tariq Anwar back. Mr. Tariq Anwar, the question which I had asked you if I had heard earlier, I, yes. I, would like to, I would like a reply to you uh, from you on that. My question was... Yeah, I think uh, I... Yes, please continue. Yeah, please repeat. My question was that Mr. Pranab Mukherjee, having been such a such, such a powerful politician, held important portfolios, was was the man behind the uh, UPA government. You know, everybody went to him for solutions. For him to now relinquish all this, go to Rashtrapati Bhavan, sit silently and watch what is happening. How easy it will be for a man of his stature and his, and his experience. And what do you expect from him as as a Rashtrapati? Uh, I uh, uh, entirely agree with the panelist, uh, and uh, I uh, I can say only that uh, uh, he has a long experience uh, of Indian politics, uh, and uh, he has a, as a uh, cabinet minister he has a, a good experience of administrative uh, capability. So I think uh, he, he will be the one of the best uh, president of India this time. And uh, uh, he will deliver his uh, duty, his constitutional uh, authority, I think, in, a, uh, in, a, in a such a manner uh, what the country is expecting. Okay. So uh, naturally, the country will benefit out of his experience and his uh, ability okay uh, i think uh, you need to go thank you very much thank for you. joining us uh, yeah now, now thank you now thank to, you yeah now mr nilotpal basu the same question which i asked uh, tari kanwar if you have heard i would like your opinion on that you have known mr pranab mukherjee for a long time quite intimately you have observed him in his work what kind of a president will he make your uh, guess, uh, your, with your audience, Girish, that uh, my first bid to enter the parliament uh, uh, failed because I was defeated by Pranab Mukherjee in 1993 in the Rajya Sabha elections. And then subsequently I entered and uh, I have uh, benefited greatly from his wisdom because uh, he has been a very good teacher in uh, the uh, procedural aspects of the uh, parliament's functioning. And I think... Uh, uh, the president is the uh, tutelar head of a tripod uh, comprising of the uh, executive and the legislature and the judiciary. And uh, I can tell you with my long association with him that his understanding of the functioning of these institutions of executive and uh, legislature is uh, really phenomenal. I mean, his understanding and insight. And uh, I understand that he is... Uh, 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 copybook uh, constitutionalist. So uh, we will uh, get to see a lot of that and I think uh, he will have an independent mind. He will not be uh, 
repeat of uh, what we saw in uh, Rashtrapati uh, Fakhruddin Ali Ahmed. Uh, he will uh, assert his position, but at the same time, he will be very much uh, zealous in, in uh, defending the constitutional uh, scheme of things, unlike, uh, uh, say, President uh, Jail Singh. But uh, I think uh, the president's role is limited in our polity. Uh, only on the questions of uh, bills which right. are sent either by the parliament or uh, is brought to him uh, from the assemblies, uh, there is some uh, scope of presidential intervention or in a situation where uh, the uh, Lok Sabha is badly hung uh, uh, subsequent to the Lok Sabha polls, there uh, he, he uh, Milot, gets to play a, a much bigger autonomous role. But overall, I think uh, he, uh, we will have a president who understands the constitution well, understands uh, the functioning of the uh, um, uh, different organs of the state well, and uh, he will defend uh, ably the constitution uh, uh, that we have. And that is precisely what we, why we wanted to have him in Rashtrapati Bhavan as again somebody who will be open to RSS influence. No, no. See, uh, coming to, you, you are talking about the legislative, legislative powers of the president. The, uh, you know, in the case, let us say one of the, one of the testing times which will come before him now will be maybe the Lokpal bill if it, get, if it comes before the uh, Raj Sabha again and, you know, if it gets passed. These are all issues which are very, very, very uh, sensitive issues. And we have seen in the past opposition parties making a beeline to Rashtrapati Bhavan at every, you know, whatever occasion, the very, very, on even very small little things, they rush to the Rashtrapati Bhavan seeking the intervention of the Rashtrapati. Do you think that with Mr. Pranam Mukherjee in Rashtrapati Bhavan, the opposition parties can expect more intervention in these kind of issues? I wouldn't uh, say that. I would say that if the opposition uh, seeks intervention of the president, where within the four corners of the constitution there is a scope of presidential intervention, he will exercise that option independently on the basis of his thorough understanding of the constitutional processes. Okay. Uh, Nila. This will be very interesting times to watch how uh, Pranam Mukherjee will function as a president. As I was asking him also, the opposition parties, even you know, so many people keep going to the president seeking his intervention. I'm sure, like unlike many of the presidents in the past, he will he will have a different approach towards these issues. I think he will give them a patient hearing, and if he thinks within the limits of the constitution. If he thinks there is the need to write to somebody, some state authority or something, he might write. But it depends on the situation, on the context. What we know for certain is that Pranab Mukherjee is not the one to rock the boat. He has never done that in his life. Right. And once he tried something and then probably burnt his fingers and is now wiser <laughs> because of it. He has been cautious. So we won't see him deviating from what his perception of proprietary would be or his perception of constitutional norms would be. But within those norms, of course, I mean, there is some leeway for the president, as Nilotpal said in the case of a badly hung assembly. Parliament. I'm Elsewhere. sorry, parliament. Or, for instance, when there is a bill, you know, a bill which probably he would have an opinion on which normally a president does not, even if he has a personal opinion. That is, that, that is the point, yeah. uh, you know, that's a very important point, which is, really I want Bharat's uh, opinion on this. Bharat, he has, he has been so close to the, uh, to power, you know, he's just two weeks back, three weeks back, he was handling a whole lot of issues in the government. Now he's going to go as Rashtrapati. And then he, all those issues may come to him at, at some point of time, in various forms, in forms of bills, in forms of decisions, whatever it is. You know, it won't it be difficult for him to, like, move away, move out of that very you know, hands-on approach which he had, and now to have a hands-off approach to the whole thing and look at these issues in a different manner. You know, the job itself would uh, define how you look at an issue. And Pranam Mukherjee, in that sense, you know, he thinks he's uh, the best constitutional expert in this <laughs> government. Would look at it purely within the four walls of the constitution. However, he will not sit silently. 
He'll make the presidency extremely vibrant. Each time the government takes a decision, it will have to think about what the Rashtrapati Bhavan is going to say about Absolutely. it. Absolutely. He's going. To, he thinks he wants to. He can advise people. Uh, and you know, he. Uh, I no, I'll, say, I'll just give you one example. The Vodafone issue. It was his uh, decision as the finance minister to impose that tax. Now there is. There seems to be some uh, change in the approach of the government towards this issue. Okay, we, we are not, I'm not very sure it will, whether it needs a presidential uh, intervention or presidential clearance. But on issues like this, you think that he can keep quiet? Well, I'm saying he'll not keep quiet on any issue where the president has a role. Right. He will always have an opinion. He'll always want to give advice to the government. You must understand the motivations of the man. He's only 78. Why on earth, you know, should an active politi politician want to become president? Only 78. Only, no, no, in Indian <laughs> politics, 78 is, uh, <laughs> you know, you're still a spring chicken. Uh, so, and he is. And if his motivation is purely the fact that he's never been number one, then the question is, what do you want to do as number one if you become number one? So I think he'll be an activist president. But activist, I say in quotes, within the uh, bounds of the constitution. Here is a man who thinks he knows the constitution. He can interpret it, uh, you know, better than uh, most, or so he thinks. Therefore, I think he'll be a, a president who will be extremely active. Uh, uh, as I said, Rashwadi Bhavan will become extremely vibrant. The government will be looking over its shoulder. And for journalists, it will become an active beat. You'll have to have somebody who covers Rashwadi Bhavan full time. Nilodpal, do you, do you see Pranam Mukherjee as an activist president? Some of the issues which I raised with the questions which I asked Bharat and you know, all those, please, can, if you can uh, you know, address them. I think uh, the points uh, they are making, there seems to be a convergence of views. And uh, I think that uh, he will uh, be unsparing in, in playing a role wherever constitution provides that opportunity. But uh, he also uh, uh, understands constitutional uh, processes like the palm of his hand. Mm -hmm. And therefore, he will, uh, uh, surely you will find him uh, that uh, the question of overstepping will not be so much there. But I think uh, it is good in a sense that uh, uh, the, the uh, trustee of the constitutional scheme is somebody uh, who is uh, prepared to uh, uh, intervene when the situation so arises will also put the government on a notice. So I think uh, there is this question that, uh, you see, for presidential assent, number of uh, legislation goes. And only after the presidential assent uh, do you have the uh, notification for the bill to become uh, 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 an act. Therefore, on all those areas, if the, there is something very, very controversial, and uh, these days many uh, laws uh, actually are being uh, struck down by the Supreme Court. Right. So I think uh, you will have a, uh, another level of uh, uh, cross-check, uh, so to say, uh, in, in, uh, legislation, in terms of the constitutionality of legislations and so on and so forth. And I think uh, that can uh, really activi actively contribute to the uh, quality of our uh, overall uh, governance, especially on the uh, legislative side. Absolutely. And uh, I, I think, but at the same time, uh, the advantage is that he will be mindful that, uh, you see, uh, he, I, I know from personal discussions that he is very zealous about uh, uh, the, the uh, uh, representative and the elected nature of our government. So he will not be doing anything which uh, really undermines the stature or the role of the elected government. Uh, on that, he is very, very mindful. But another area, I think, where he can actually contribute uh, quite handsomely is uh, that he has been a foreign minister in the past Absolutely. and uh, uh, and he can really complement some of the role that uh, maybe the foreign minister or the prime minister plays in terms of uh, 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 strengthening our uh, friendly yeah. relations with Absolutely. a number of countries. Uh, yes, uh, th that's a very interesting point you've made, uh, Nilodpal. The, pres the, the presidential tours abroad so far, we have seen, you know, they're, they're known as, in journalistic terms, as junkets. But the presidential tours from now onwards may become much more interesting, you know, because of his vast experience in foreign policy and the way he has dealt with almost all the countries in the world. Probably. And what we call soft diplomacy, right. you know, he would be a kind of asset for the government there, government of the day. And also, he can come up with valuable insights right. into international processes. 
and we have to watch him functioning say for instance with respect to Pakistan absolutely you know so one thing is that the other thing i would like to say we know much more as to what he would not do he would never toy with the with the kind of ideas which venkat raman toyed with like a national government right you or, know or zel singh himself or you know, zel singh or zel singh to dismiss an elected prime minister who enjoys a big majority in the house right. he will never do that what he might do is i mean there probably rajendra prasad comes in he might have a correspondence with the prime minister once in a while if he so not not to the extent that nehru and rajendra prasad had right. because they came from a different background background of nationalist struggle and there would be i mean as far as diplomacy is concerned you would remember radha krishnan as vice president was an asset for nehru while dealing with stalin absolutely you know so you might find that kind of a role though not of that stature i mean i wouldn't compare radha krishnan radha krishnan i mean he was of a no, different but, kind uh, but bharat yes. uh, uh, pranab mukherjee if you look at all the presidents in the past there has been no president with this kind of experience in politics right not true i'm saying nilam sanjeev reddy was a no, very but, you know, he has, I do, but but he he never held the kind of portfolios which uh, yeah venkat raman Pradab, Pradab was uh, has held uh, venkat raman was a very active politician yes, but, but wanting you know, to go as into retirement powerful this man was a very powerful politician but look at his performance in the last few years you know i mean i don't want to uh, sort of rain on uh, his parade but the point is was you know already people are criticizing his role in the finance ministry he uh, was in the sort of uh, indira gandhi uh, mold yeah. you know sort of uh, Uh, he he was not for liberalization in the same way that the prime minister no, is that is exactly they the point eye eye. that is exactly the point which i was trying to yes. make how is he going to deal with this kind of thing? the dynamics between the president and the prime minister now is going to be very w- interesting you know worth watching actually i agree with you considering that this prime minister has worked as a bureaucrat under, under pranam mukherjee yes. earlier i don't know how much respect pranam mukherjee has for manmohan singh the man Uh, forget you know as prime minister of course he has to respect him uh, or his, no, his, his understanding of the politics fact is that or his the fact worldview. is the two of them have functioned so far without showing any strains in that relationship but there was there was after all a strain and it's not as if pranam mukherjee really flowered under manmohan singh you know he was he headed so many goms and egoms but what was the result of those goms did any concrete result come out i am not aware of any result you tell me uh, did he manage uh, the lokpal bill very well did he manage telangana very well of course the mess was created by uh, chidambaram but uh, you know uh, you, you look at his record uh, even as a trouble shooter in the last couple of years hasn't been great nilotpal this, this assessment of bharat bhushan of uh, uh, mr pranam mukherjee do you, uh, do, you to, do you to, agree to, with it or do you have a different point of view on this to to add spice to uh, the question about uh, possible president uh, prime minister relationship yeah the dynamics uh, can can i just supply an information that actually uh, uh, dr manmohan singh used to be the rbi governor when uh, pranam mukherjee handled the finance portfolio right so in a way pranam mukherjee at uh, some point in time had been uh, the prime minister's boss right. uh, i don't know whether uh, that gets reflected now <laughs> but Uh, anyway the question is i think uh, again i mean uh, the, the advantage with pranab mukherjee is this that his uh, understanding and also uh, maybe the commitment to the constitutional process i think he will not uh, really Overstep. put his nose uh, into uh, areas which are gov- government's exclusive prerogative but uh, i think uh, Uh, rather the government will do well to seek his advice even if they are not constitutionally due something i i i absolutely. i think there 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 the government can benefit but absolutely. i don't know whether that will happen because uh, um, what we understand and the manner in which uh, some of the panelists in the in in your program earlier was making uh, i mean i mean uh, to to Uh, make uh, uh, economic policy the neoliberal variety the be all and end all of the 
existence of this government where uh, outside the government is shouting that Obama should not have said all these things but uh, in the Supreme Court they are arguing that uh, even yeah. the constitutional anyway. process and the legal process should be uh, uh, subordinated to the needs of investment in this country. Therefore, uh, I, mean, I think... Know, Anyway, it, it, it is going to be a very interesting times, so there's no doubt. But probably in the question of appointments, appointments of, you know, Supreme Court judges and other appointments which, which has to be ratified by the president, maybe we will see the Pranam Mukherjee stamp in some of these appointments. We will have to wait and watch. In any case, we are, uh, we are, going, we are looking at very interesting times ahead, something which this country has not seen as far as Rashtrapati is concerned with this kind of experience. And as we discussed, the kind of dynamics between the government and the Rashtrapati Bhavan is something worth watching. But there is no doubt that we have one of the most eminent men who is going to be occupying the office of the Rashtrapati very soon. So let us wait and watch how all this will develop. Thanks to all my guests, uh, Mr. Nilot Palbasu, uh, Nilab Mishra, and Bharat Bhushan. Thank you. This, this was a special edition of The Big Picture. Please keep watching. We'll come back with other issues in the coming days. Thank you very much.